So let's talk safety. Now, you are getting two devices here that have potentially some serious damage capabilities. So let's talk first about the knife. Yeah, we're gonna give you a knife. I know, it scares me too, but we know you can handle it. We know you could make poor choices, but we're asking you not to, especially when you're in class, right? Some of you have used a box knife lots. You're all good. You know exactly how to work it. Some of you have never used one before. So how do you use one safely? Number one is that whenever you use a knife and then you're done with it, you have the blade retracted, you pull it back in, then you put it down. You do not want to leave the blade out and then put it down on the ground for a couple of reasons. Number one, if it's just on the edge of a desk, I've had it happen before where somebody hits it with their body and yet it falls off the desk and it could go into your foot like that. Nobody wants that. That sounds owie. It is owie, so don't do that. I've never had it happen, but it could. It could also cut on the way down, right? So if it's like falling down, it hits your leg, just shh. Yeah, especially if you had shorts on, oh, that'd be a doozy. So keep it retracted when it's on the desk. Second thing that can happen is somebody else might want to use it not knowing the blade's out and grab it with the blade out and cut their finger there. Unlikely they would do it, but they might. So keep it retracted, keep it down. All right, next thing, most common way that I think people could probably injure themselves is when they're cutting, they have whatever is bracing the wood too close to their line of cut. So if I'm cutting this direction and my thumb's right there, whoo, that's close. Because sometimes when you're cutting into this and you're really trying to go, it can kind of slip like that. And if my thumb was up here, I could slip and just slice right through it. Keep your fingers away from your line of cut. You can be a little safer if you're gonna cut things a little shorter. You can be even safer by using a straight edge like this. And that way my fingers are way far away from it. It keeps the blade from coming over to the side like this. Do multiple cuts instead of one deep cut. Just kind of keep cutting through until it goes all the way through like that. Now, if you want to have some sort of design on the side, like a curve, something like this on the side of your, your car, then again, just same idea, really gentle, don't go too deep, don't push too hard, follow your line, right, real shallow. This is gonna take me lots of cuts to get through it. And that's okay. There we go. And finally, oh, not quite. See if I'm, I can feel if I'm pulling on it, there's still a connection over here in the front. So I do a couple more cuts that way. All right, there it's cut out. And you don't break your car. And you don't break your car, it's true. I've seen people really push hard and then snap things, so do be careful. There are some big disadvantages to cutting a curb out the side of your car. So decide if you want to do that. Number one, mainly, is that it's hard to use the T-square to get a straight bearing on that. So just be aware that is true. Now, let's talk about the hot glue gun. It's a funny thing. They call it a hot glue gun because, number one, it's hot. Yeah, really hot, like really, really hot. Hot enough to melt plastic, hot. And it's glue. So that glue is trying to stick to things. So if you get hot glue onto your finger, well, you're gonna get something that is really, really hot, which burns your skin, right? And it wants to glue to your finger. It wants to stick there, it wants to stay there. This, both of these things are not good. You don't want that on your skin. That's not ideal. And what'll happen is if you get that hot glue gun or that hot glue on your skin, you're gonna wanna take it off right away because it's hot and it hurts. Well, you try to do that, you rip it off. You've already done damage to the tissue of your skin, so it's easier to break or to pull off. And this glue is already starting to adhere and grab onto your skin. So you put those two in combination, you go to pull it off, and I often will see a little crater left behind where the skin was removed with the glue. 
This is really unpleasant, really painful for a long time. Please, please, I know, I know there's a big fascination to see just how hot is it. I bet I can handle it, I'm really tough. Please don't do it, please don't do it. If you wanna do it, go home, under your parents' supervision, do it with them. Not under my supervision, please, all right? Or under your teacher's supervision. Let's not do that, so avoid it. Now, that's intentional, but sometimes it happens by accident. And the most common ways it happens by accident is that there is going to be, um, you're working on your car, let's say you're putting glue on your bearings over here, and you go from this bearing to this bearing, and on your way over, you hit your hand on the way over. That hurts. It's not as bad as putting a big glob of glue on there, but it hurts pretty bad. The other thing that'll happen is that sometimes there's hot glue that gets on the on the board that you're using, and then you don't know it's there because it's kind of clear still, it's really hot, and you accidentally put your finger in it. That happens sometimes. So be careful, don't just put your hand on the board that is being used for hot gluing because there is often little bits of it there. This metal tip <clears throat> is very hot. Some hot glue guns, they have these little plastic tips to them to help protect you from that. It's not quite as hot. It's still really hot, so be careful. And the side of the hot glue guns are really hot too. Notice how there's melted glue on here? That's because this is the side of this is hot enough to melt the glue as well. So the only thing that's safe to touch is the handle and the trigger and the back where you feed in the glue sticks. Let's say accidentally or on purpose, I don't care, I got some hot glue on my finger or my hand or whatever. The very first thing you do is resist your temptation to rip it off, remember that's bad because it'll just take off skin and everything else with it, and you go immediately over to the sink. Just beeline over to wherever the sink is in your room, turn on the cold water and stick your finger or whatever part that got the hot glue on it, put it in there and wait and wait and wait. You want your finger to get good and numb. Once your finger's like so cold that you barely can feel it anymore, then give it about another minute after that. It's not gonna damage the finger. In fact, it's cooling off the glue and making it so it's doing less damage to your skin, to your tissue. So, let's say we're all done there. Now you may think, well, now I can just rip it off, right? No, 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 no. See, it's already adhered. It's already stuck to your skin. You've already done some damage to your skin. Just let it fall off on its own. Just give it time. It might take a day or two. Sometimes it falls off right away. More often it'll take hours to a day, maybe two. And then it falls off and you're still gonna, it's still gonna hurt, it's still gonna be red, but it won't be that much damage. You won't have an open wound. That's ideal. All right, be safe, be careful, ask for help if you need it.